okay so yesterday we have basically faced some issue with the s3 bucket so the concept is basically uh, in the real time we get the task you know uh, let's say we have a different two aws accounts here uh, account a and account b okay so there might be a requirement like uh, suppose we have s3 bucket in the account a which has uh, data and we have an application uh, server running in the account b okay the, this kind of situation will come in the real time and if that situation then we will we can use ima role here to create uh, access the bucket uh, from the account b to our account a okay so we don't need to give the uh, access key and secret key there as a ima user basically so we can use that cross account uh, feature in the uh, within the aws accounts okay if there are any legacy system like legacy applications which is hosted on the any on data center in that situation we can use that you know the ima user so uh, as of now you are clear about the right uh, what is the users and groups uh, users and the roles so yes that's so let me recap uh, just basically quickly so users basically uh, users and roles the major difference is in the users we will get credentials which is access key and secret key and we can use that access key and secret key to log in from anywhere there is no restriction either we can use our boto uh, you know boto sdk or something library or we can use from the any uh, command line utility your uh, windows machine or mac machine or linux machine or your ide tool basically visual studio something okay and we have seen the configuration process how we can uh, first we need to install the aws cli there latest version and we can configure by using aws configure command okay and we can also uh, configure the multiple aws accounts just by using hyphen hyphen profile options okay and the other uh, difference and the other difference is like uh, where it is so for ad ima users we can use outside the uh, aws like a legacy system or something but for the roles we can use within aws services only okay not from the outside uh, aws like from the any uh, legacy system applications so these are the main uh, difference basically and uh, policy is basically to control the uh, user auth authorization system which user we want to we user or roles we want to give the permissions either full access or any restricted restricted access as we have seen yesterday we can just allow particular s3 bucket access or any route 53 service or lambda functions these can these uh, restriction we can manage through the policies basically there are lots of policies and inside the policies we have seen customer managed policy and aws managed policy okay uh, so difference between aws managed and customer managed policies basically we can't modify the aws managed policy we need to use as it is which is pre configured by the aws and customer managed policy obviously we can edit anytime according to our use case simply and user groups is basically uh, if we have a, let's say we want to create any hundreds of users or something and instead of granting the permission uh, for the individual users we can add different groups here like finance team it team or something and on the group level we can assign the policy instead of giving the individual users because it's a time consuming process and uh, in the real time cases if you have any aws account and you want access uh, for the aws account okay not for the any roles or any services so in that situation uh, organization use their active directory you know federation so they there from there we can raise the request for the aws account okay and if you need any particular service access we can obviously go with the policy based role based access basically and to set up this for now we have two aws accounts okay so on the account a we have s3 bucket and we will create one ima role here and that this s3 bucket we will access from the account b which is we have different aws accounts okay this situation will when we have application in account b and our s3 bucket might be in the different account in that situation we can use this cross account feature so let's see the uh, configuration basically 
so i have collected this uh, policy so there was uh, just minor uh, missing uh, we have done basically so i just tested yesterday so we can use this kind of this kind of let me explain you on this okay so what we can do is we can create one ima user roles here now users and roles uh, clear right what is the difference yes it's clear so let's create one use a role here i have just uh, added some notification uh, notes here so in account a which is you know we have we will create this one uh, this role let me give the another name let's say prod okay and just click on role and we need to select this one here okay because we are going to uh, give the access for the another account okay so this uh, this uh, supports to have access from different regular times so after selecting this options just scroll down here it will ask like uh, this account or another account so just click on another account and we have uh, another account which which is account id is different okay this account id we will get uh, from here if you just click on this your username you will get from the here account id okay you can just simply copy it so i have <coughs> two aws account now one i log in here and another one i log in in incognito mode okay and i just copied the this account id here and you can just paste okay account b basically you can consider and just click on next yesterday i have i have already created the policy so let me explain you that you can just select the policy and simply click next to attach and you can give the role name this one and just click on create role just search the role name okay so we have this role now so if just click on that role so we can see the policy let let me expand it it's so basically um, the policies like <coughs> suppose let's say i have user so i can just list out the all the buckets okay but i can perform this action like put object get object or delete object only these operations i can perform only this bucket okay i will not perform on the all s3 bucket i just re restricted to only particular bucket which is uh, we have aws guruji okay if you have in the real time different bucket you just need to replace the bucket name only okay what is the meaning of star is basically this uh, arn will allow for the bucket level and the star is basically slash star is it will allow to access all the objects inside the bucket you can perform these operations get put delete and you can also add uh, other permissions like delete bucket create bucket or something you just need to just click on edit and simply give the comma this way and this way you can just add the permissions okay so policy is very simple so just now so now we have created the roles here okay we have in the account uh, a now we have s3 bucket this one and we have some data here okay and now let's go to the account b okay which uh, doesn't have any s3 bucket this one okay let me refresh here oh, as of now you can see there are no buckets in the account b okay you can see here so how we can yeah. switch the roles basically you will find the options from here under your user, user name
Halo, Daniel. Halo. Halo. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, so we are in the account B now, oke. Okay? So how we can switch uh, to the account A to access the S3 bucket? Just simply click on your username, okay? You will find the switch role option here, okay? As of now, you can see there are no uh, any S3 bucket. So let, let me switch here, switch role. And here we need to enter the all the details, which uh, where is the S3 bucket, uh, you know, created basically, hosted. So let's uh, go to that account, okay? I have collected the, this information for the account A. Okay. So you can just get this account A, account ID. Okay. And simply key, enter here account ID role which we have created. Let's go to the account A. Okay. This uh, role we have created. You can just simply copy this role name and go to account B where uh, from where we want to access okay and just give the role name here and simply click on switch role so you can see here we have successfully switched to uh, account a s3 bucket uh, okay service and you will see uh, here you know the role name basically and your account id and as of now as of now you can see we have access the s3 bucket which is hosted in the account a so you can perform the operations whatever the you have permissions basically as of now we have just grant the access for the single bucket okay not for the all bucket so in the, in the real time you you should uh, configure the same way because giving the all s3 bucket access it's way not feasible basic basically for the security risk you can list out the all s3 bucket okay and you can perform the operations like we can just let me try to upload the any files. This one full permission only read write permission, sir. How? Uh, based on uh, the policy we have attached. As of now, uh, as I explained, where it is in the policy, we have uh, only allow for the get object, put object, and delete object. We have so according to your policy configuration, we can perform the operations. Uh, is that your question? Yeah, got okay. it. Yeah. So now let me try to upload the files. Either you can upload single files or multiple files. Okay, just clicking this way and just select and upload. So this way we can just find uh, perform the operations and you to download the files for any single file. Okay, you can just simply click on that and you can just simply click on this. <clears throat> download okay now let me try to access another bucket which we doesn't have permissions it should give the error like you no know, access denied let me try to access this this bucket and let me upload the files just select these files and try to upload okay it should give the error basically yeah you can see so it's basically access denied so this way for the best security practices we can just grant only single bucket access by using this policy let me send you this policy basically so you can just have a practicals on your machine any questions on this accessing cross rule so based on your access policy you can access other services as well and to switch role from here you can just use this option switch role and if you want to go back to your normal your account original account just click on this switch back so you can just simply bring back to your original account yeah as of now you can see there are no s3 bucket okay so this way you can configure another account s3 bucket Any doubts on this cross account access? It's very simple, right? Just you need to uh, configure the source account, basically source AWS account. You need to configure this uh, one uh, role, basically I am a role and 
with this policy and your you can mention this specific bucket if you want to give the access okay for particular bucket and that's it that's all and from then from the target uh, from where you want to access that uh, bucket you need you need to get this two uh, parameters basically account source account id and role name basically and you can use that switch role feature to switch to access the bucket okay i have a question here like suppose we have a ec2 instance in one account and s3 bucket in another account and we created role and attached it to the ec2 instance but in the policy how we can mention for the cross account you want to act let's say now we have two account right so yes. in your account you don't have any or uh, ec2 permissions to access to from the another account let me try that so same way you can just need to modify your permissions basically let's try so let me add one more policy here for the ec2 okay just simply you can add the here and just search amazon ec2 you can see here amazon ec2 full access okay just simply click on that and attach that policy sorry once policy attached let's try to use that switch feature okay let's it's come in the role history now because we have already uh, access it just simply click on that let's try to access the uh, ec2 instance just click on the ec2 service okay yeah you got it the access right because in your account uh, there is no ec2 instance running so this way you can just configure the policy and use this cross ro role account access if i just click on a switch uh yeah uh, actually uh, my question is uh, we have ec2 instance in one account and we wanted to access s3 from that ec2 instance uh, so we have to attach ec2 role uh, to that ec2 instance particularly right so from uh, ec2 instance you want to access your s3. other account s3 bucket yes so we do we need to mention accounts uh, detail in that role or how it is let me why forget here so you you have account a okay and in that account you have ec2 instance yes ec2 and you have account b where s3 bucket is hosted yes and now uh, let's say you have an application running in the this is ec2 instance right and from there this application should access this s3 bucket data in short yes yes okay so in that case we need to uh, create a same role policy but in the different way because you want to access data from here to here let's try that so we are in the original account now where ec2 instance is hosted and we have this uh, s3 bucket role okay and we have a s3 bucket policy here but in that case we need to create one more policy where the s3 bucket uh, arn should mention basically so from let's uh, try to create on log into your account let me switch back and we can create one s3 bucket here okay yeah this might, this situation might come in the real time if they have multiple aws uh, accounts and bucket hosted in different account okay so let's create one s3 bucket here
and select the region and simply just disable this option block public access and just simply create okay bucket name is already exist or just test If it's in the same account, then obviously we can just simply attach the role to that instance. It's a, a straightforward. But we have a situation like we have S3 bucket in different account. So we have S3 bucket here now, account B. Okay. But uh, I have a question that uh, do IAM user can give permissions to root user? Is it possible? IAM user can give access to the miss. I I I am I am user has the uh, S three bucket, right? So uh, the IAM user can give permissions to root user. Is it possible? Because we have S three bucket in. Root user, am, right? user, main master user actually. So in the yeah. in the real time cases, you should not use your uh, root account basically. For we are doing right. our personal account and we are doing practice, so that is fine. But in the real time mm -hmm. cases, you should not use your uh, root account. If that's get right. compromised, then your you know business will impact due to any spamming activity or something. So in that mm -hmm. situation, you can create additional users there with the administrator access, and you can use that as a practice or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So in the uh, real time, you should not use a root account, and obviously we will not get that root account access in the real time. So there is a different concept, uh, power user basically. If you uh, heard about it, let me go to policy. So what is the difference between I am administrator user and the power user basically? Power user has the same access to the similar to the administrator access, okay? But he can't manage the users basically. He can't create users and the grant permissions. So the, this, these are the difference between power user and administrator user in the AWS. You can find the policy here. If you just select power, type power here, you can see here power user access. It's, uh, so let's say in the use cases, like you want to ac give access someone, but you don't want to give access so he can create another administrator or any users basically. So in that situation, you can use this policy power user access so he can't create any additional users there so for the practice purpose you can try on your own machine so let me know <clears throat> with this power user uh, access and also there is a uh, one more option like boundaries uh, we can mention like what he cannot do we can mention it in the yeah inline policy basically i forgot to explain uh, no uh, boundary Boundary option is there, right? Hmm. In uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is for the authorization. We want to restrict within the some areas, basically. Okay. Yeah. And there is, you know, you can see here the create inline policy, which is, let's say, I give this user full access here, but if I set the create inline policy here. I still ac give the access as a standard uh, full S3 bucket access, but if I switch create one more inline policy here uh, for the same specific bucket. So that is basically the boundary basically. So he, he has a, you know, let's say for the real time example, you have a complete society access, you know, in your building premises basically, but in that you can walk anywhere or something, but you have only your own flat access there. You know, you don't want to, you don't, you can't access any member flat there basically. So that is the concept for this inline policy. Basically, if you have RDS full access, but if you want to in that RDS, you, if you want to give any specific permission additionally, like he can just reboot the RDS or start the RDS. So in the, that way, you can set up in the inline policy. So he can just access only those actions. You can set up a boundary basically with the inline policy.
maybe I haven't I haven't been clear. Just one thing, like uh, let's say we have a root user and we have created one power user, right? So power user has created its uh, S3 bucket and root user has its own uh, uh, EC2 instance. Mm. And from that EC2 instance, I want to access the power users. Uh, S3 bucket. So, shall that power user can give access to root user? Is it possible? See, root user has by default all the access. You don't need to give any specific permission to that. He has a ma okay. master user. So, as a your Windows machine, if you have mm -hmm. an administrator user, so he can access anything, right? As he has right. a master user. Mm -hmm. so you don't need to give okay. any additional permission to uh, root user, basically. Okay, so for normal user, if it's not uh, uh, power user, then also uh, root user can access any EC2 instance from the IAM user, right? Yes, he can manage anything. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, but to perform any specific action uh, on these services, a role. Uh, role needs to be created right yes as a best practice we should not use uh, users here because it's a uh, get in the credentials so it can it can be a security risk so if you have any uh, a task like you want to access within aws accounts so obviously you should go with the roles only not the users so when you design basically uh, create ima roles so it will ask the questions like you know uh, use cases basically so you will uh, see here lots of services so if you have a use case for the ec2 instance you can select this one if you have a lambda function use case you can select this one or any other services you can select from here so within aws service you can use roles not the users as a best practice and you can uh, give the restricted uh, permissions by creating the any custom policy if you just click on this policy create policy it will give the basically uh, graphical wizards first you can select the like as so let's say ec2 and you can uh, select the operations like you know if you want to give any specific permission like describe ec2 instance or list or reboot or something so according to that you can just grant the permissions so uh, in the real time, you should not give the uh, full access for any users basically until and unless there are uh, certain approvals, uh, you know, you got that user. Otherwise, uh, you know, is, it might be a security risk. So you can just, that user who are the uh, raising the request for uh, any particular users or roles, he should raise with the proper you know, uh, requirement and the approval process. In the real time, there might be a account owner uh, approval required, you know, project manager or something, or AWS account owner who first need to approve the request, and then only you should give the access based on the requirement. Like someone uh, raising the request for the read-only permissions, and you are unnecessarily giving the full access. That uh, actually doesn't make sense, right? Because if that user doesn't know any features, and he accidentally terminate the service, so there might be a different situation, right? And there might be a questions like uh, if he raised the request for the read-only permissions and you granted full permission. So it's obviously escalation for you in the real time. So uh, we know we need to follow the process in the real time, basically. Giving the role access and the user access in the real time, it's a very uh, no, critical task because there are lots of organization policy there settled. So we need to follow that policy only. If someone directly come to you in the chat box and ask, hey, just can you give me one users and roles with this blah, blah permission. So you should not directly blindly go and create it. You should follow the company policy, basically, whatever the process are there in the org level. It might be a different, different, it's a depend on the company and the project policies, basically. So you should first follow that. So in the, you might create, you know, one Jira ticket over there and get get it to get the approvals or in the there might be another tools you know service now or something in the project so from there you can get the approval with the from the respective persons like account owner or something only that uh, after that you can create the users or roles here users obviously obviously no one suggests to give the credentials to share someone and 
if, if there are requirement within AWS service, so we can use roles here. And in the org level, they use one password or last pass to share their credentials if you want to share. And uh, uh, one more question I have, like, uh, suppose user is having uh, access to creating the load balancer, but uh, uh, can we restrict him like for he can create only one or two uh, load balancer in the numbers? Uh, can we restrict that person? Numbers, uh, I'm not sure, but we can, as I said yesterday, you can configure the CloudWatch events for the any spe specific server service basically so you can get the uh, triggers but i think there are some process like uh, i haven't worked on but there is a process like in the aws account uh, you can set up the configuration like uh, creating any resources uh, services in the aws account first that user need uh, need approval basically so let me type here how to okay approval during service creation there are some features actually in the aws i have I have just heard, but I never try that. How to get approval during service creation in AWS. So any user has the permissions. Okay. He directly can't create any resources. First, it will uh, generate one approval email and that approval link will go to the account owner or any team leader, basically, who has a cloud, you know, working as a cloud architect or architect role or something. So he will get uh, one email with the link. If he approved the re your request, then only you can launch your uh, services basically. Okay. Yeah. This way you can just restrict basically. Without approval, he can't create any services. So let me note down this question so I can just go through that. Uh, so, like, uh, suppose a person is creating a resources using the Terraform, and he is creating like a load balancer, uh, one load balancer he need, but instead of that, uh, he just did ten by mistake only. So, like, uh, so AW should uh, should not do that, like. Uh, he can create only one uh, load balancer. There, like I think uh, there there is a service, but I I heard some some time back, but I don't remember actually. Yeah, this way I know um, we, there is there is an approval process in the AWS accounts. And to restrict only he can create only single AWS load balancer. So we need to check basically if there are any options are there. Let me check and uh, is there any service like uh, uh, like we have in uh, uh, Kubernetes? Like a resource quota limits. AWS, uh, not sure about the Kubernetes, but in AWS, uh, we have an account level quota basically, not the user level quota. If you, okay. If you just click like a service quota here, service quota, and just open a new tab. Uh, this is for the account level basically, not the user level. So okay. Click on any services like uh, for the load balancer. Let's say this is instance here. You can check the quota uh, quota here. And you, uh, if you want a uh, more uh, quota, then you can just simply click on that particular option and you can request increase level here, account level. Okay. But that is for the account level, not for the any individual user. Okay. Yeah, let me check on this on the letter after the session. There might be a uh, we, we need to check basically. 
Okay. I also I have note down your another questions which is uh, how to access from one account to another account right so basically in a another account we can create the roles and we can assign the same process like we have just shown for the S3 bucket cross account access so in tomorrow okay I'll I'll try that yeah also definitely we can cover that in tomorrow session basically a role based uh, model basically and in the bucket policy or uh, role where we are creating to access the s3 bucket we can we need to give the uh, s3 bucket arn in, in that uh, let's yeah, this one we can cover in tomorrow session so okay no problem On IMA part, any other questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then let's uh, check for the data sync, data sync basically. In real time, you might get the questions like uh, if you have a uh, two different uh, account AWS, you know, S3 bucket. Let's say here you have one uh, S3 bucket and account A, okay. And you want to migrate the data from one, uh, one S3 bucket to different AWS account or different S3, S3 bucket basically right this might be a situation where you want to sync the data or migrate data from one bucket to another S3 bucket you might got this uh, questions uh, questions or uh, task in the real time okay so there is a uh, inbuilt uh, service from the AWS sites so you can use that there are multiple ways either you can just if you have a single data you know very minimum data size like one within a M one GB or MB or something so you can just simply access that bucket okay here and you can just simply download the data and you can upload log into that particular account and you can just upload okay but that is a not a feasible way or good practice basically there might be a chances you, you will lose you know miss any data to download and upload okay and uh, another way is you can use AWS CLI command line utility S3 command copy data from one one bucket to another bucket. So there is a one command basically to sync the folder from one bucket to another bucket. So you can use command line uh, this way. Okay, you just need to give the source bucket name and your target bucket name here, as you can see the command. And if you want to exclude any particular folder or file format, you can just use this option exclude. Okay. So this is, this is the one more options apart from the console. And the other one is like, you can use data sync service, which is more feasible to set up basically. So let's say, uh, open the data sync service. Let me stop.